the one s of january Let's walk across the mountain. The summits and the heights are covered with snow. Down. Valley's gray stone faces, green and cross, rocks and pines. It was cold and wet, water trickled down the rocks and leapt across the way. Pine branches hung heavy in the damp air. In the sky, gray clouds were drifting. But everything so close. And then the fog steamed up and billowed heavy and moist through the brush so sluggish so Everything was so small to lands, so near, so wet. Lands would have liked to place the earth behind the understand why it took him so long to climb down a slope to reach a distant point. Lance thought Lance should be able to measure everything with a few steps only at time.
when the storm hurled clouds into the valleys and steam rose up into the forest and voices awakened on the rock faces like distantly fading thunder with the mighty roar as though they wanted to sing praises to the earth in wild exultation and the clouds came charging like wild neighing steeds and the sunshine broke through between them and came to draw its glittering sword along the snow-covered slopes so that a bright dazzling light cut across the summits into the forest or oh, when the storm drove the clouds downward Limpid blue lake on the way. And then the wind died down and hummed upward from the deep gorges, from the tops of the pines. of bells and a soft red reached up to a deep blue and little clouds drifted by on silver wings and all the Something <gasps> tore <gasps> inside <gasps> his chest. <gasps> he stood <gasps> panting, <gasps> his body <gasps> bent over, <gasps> eyes <gasps> and <gasps> mouth <gasps> wide <gasps> open. <gasps> he felt <gasps> he had <gasps> to draw <gasps> the storm <gasps> into <gasps> his body. <gasps> contain it all within him he spread himself wide and lay on top of the earth he dug into the universe it was a lust that hurt Orlan stood still and rested his head <gasps> on the moss <gasps> and half closed his eyes. <gasps> and then things drifted <gasps> far from him. The earth gave way under him, <coughs> became small like a wandering star, <coughs> and immersed itself <coughs> in a rushing stream. whose clear waters <coughs> surged <coughs> 
beneath him. These were only moments. And then Lance rose sober, firm, calm, as though a shadow play had passed in front of him. And everything so began to feel the terror of loneliness. Lance, Lance was alone, all alone. Lance, Lance wanted to talk to himself, but Lance, Lance could not. Lance, Lance hardly dared to breathe.
Lance walked through the village. Lights were shining through the windows. He looked in while passing by. Children at the table, old women, young girls, restful, quiet faces all. It seemed to him that the light must be radiating from them. He was feeling easier, and soon he was at the parsonage in Vathda. They were at table, Lance went in, blonde curls framed his pale face, eyes and mouth twitched, his clothes were torn, oh, Berlin welcomed Lance, oh, Berlin took Lance for a workman. cozy room and the quiet faces that emerged from the shadow, the bright child's face on which all light seemed to rest and which looked up in wonder and trust and the mother sitting in back in the shadow in angel light. Lance began to talk about his own country, he sketched a 
Egyptian costumes that crowded round him in sympathy soon. He felt at home his pale childlike face smiling now, his lively narration he calmed down. He felt as though familiar figures, forgotten faces were stepping out of the dark. All songs were awakened, lands was far, far Finally, it was time to leave. Lens was taken across the street. The parsonage was too crowded. Lens was given a room in the schoolhouse. Lens went upstairs. It was cold. There, a large room, empty, a tall bed in back. Lens placed the light on the table and paced up and down. Lance reflected on the events of the day, how he had come here, where he was, the room in the parsonage with its light and the dear faces. Nothing was left to fill it. The light was extinguished. The darkness devoured everything. Lance <gasps> was <gasps> gripped <gasps> by <gasps> an <gasps> unspeakable <gasps> fear. <gasps> Lance <gasps> leapt <gasps> up. <gasps> he <gasps> ran <gasps> through <gasps> the <gasps> room, <gasps> down <gasps> the <gasps> stairs, <gasps> out <gasps> of <gasps> the house, but in vain, all was dark, nothing. Flickered 
but the water was not deep. He splashed in it. People came running. He felt relieved, now he was ashamed and sorry for having alarmed these from south to north and whose mighty peaks stood grave or silently motionless like a dawning dream vast masses of light at times welling up from the valley like a golden stream then again clouds hovering on the highest peaks and then slowly drifting down along the forest toward the valley or of sunlight like a flying silvery web. No noise. No
thing. Now, near by, now, distant. Some specks also appeared, skeletons of huts, boards thatched with straw, black, somber, in color. A people, silent and grave, as though they were afraid to disturb the stillness of the valley, gave a quiet greeting as they rode by. Inside the huts, things were lively. People crowded round Oberlin, who guided, advised, comforted everywhere, trusting looks and prayers. There was talk of dreams, premonitions, and quickly on to practical life. Road building, canalization, a visit to the school. Oberlin was untiring. Lance's steady companion now. Involved in conversation now. In business now. In the contemplation of nature, it all had a wholesome and soothing influence on him. Lance often had to look Oberlin in the eye. And the powerful tranquility which overcomes us in the presence of nature and repose in the deep forest in moonlit melting summer nights seemed to him even nearer in this restful eye, this venerable grave face. His conversation was very pleasant to Oberlin, who took great delight in Lance's charming child. Like face. But only as long as the sunshine lay in the valley were things bearable for Lance. was haunted by a strange fear he would have liked to run after the sun. As the objects turned shadowy by degree, all seemed dreamlike to lens and repugnant lens was gripped by fear like children who sleep in the dark. Lance felt as if Lance were blind. Now the fear grew the demon of madness at his feet, the desperate thought rose up before him that it all was nothing but a dream. Lance clung to every object, figures and shapes were running past him. Lance pressed against them, they were shadows. Life was drained from Lance, and his limbs were rigid. He spoke, he sang, he recited passages from Shakespeare. He reached for everything that used to make his blood flow faster. He tried everything but cold, cold. 
then he heard to get out into the open floor. A few spots of luminosity diffused by the night made Lance feel better once his eyes had got used to the dark lens flung himself into the fountain. The harsh shock of the water helped Lance. He also secretly hoped for a sickness. He did his bathing now with less noise. Adjusted to his life, the calmer he got. He assisted Oberlin, he sketched, he read the Bible. Old abandoned hopes rose in him. The New Testament became real here. When Oberlin told him how an invisible hand had held him on the bridge, A radiance had dazzled his eyes on the mountain top. How he had heard a voice. How something had talked to him in the night. And how God was dwelling within him so fully that he draw lots childlike to find out what to do. Everlasting heaven in life. Peace. Being in God. came so close to people all in heavenly mysteries not powerfully majestic but still familiar
One morning he went outside. Snow had fallen during the night. The valley was filled with bright sunshine. But farther away the landscape was half hidden in mist. He soon went off the path. Up a gentle slope, no more footprints, a pine forest, oh, one side the sun, reflected in crystals the sun. was light and flaky here. And their tracks of game impressed in the snow. Into the No motion of the air other than a soft breeze or the flutter of a bird lightly dusting the flakes off its tail. Everything so still and the trees far into the distance with swaying white feathers against the deep blue air lands felt more and more comfortable the monotonous vast expanses and lines which sometimes seemed to speak to him in mighty voices were shrouded. Lance was overcome by an intimate feeling of Christmas. At times, Lance thought that his mother was about to step forward from behind a tree large as life and tell him that all these were Christmas gifts from her as he went downhill and saw that a rainbow of rays was forming round his shadow lands felt as if Something had touched him on the forehead, the essence of things spoke to him. Lance went back. Oberlin was in the room. Lance went to him cheerfully and told him he would not mind giving a 